Hello friends, my name is Miss Susan and I'm from the Ewing branch of the Mercer County Library System. And today we have another episode of the author study. And today's author is Jacob Grant. JacobGrantBooks.com. This is where I got all the information from. This is Jacob Grant. Jacob Grant is an author and illustrator who makes picture books. Originally from Ohio, he now lives in Chicago with his wife and two children. He has a home studio where he does his drawing, painting, and writing. Jacob Grant just recently visited the Society of Illustrators in New York City. And guess what? His own art was hanging on the wall. Jacob Grant said choosing a new color palette for each page of his sketchbook has done so much to make daily doodles more exciting. So if you're an artist, try your daily doodles. Jacob also says that his creative process is like lazy printmaking, and it's more like building a Lego set with awful or terrible instructions. So in order to get to order or take out books from our library catalog, you search under the author field and you type in Grant Jacob, and you will find almost all of his illustrations, the books that he illustrated. This book, Can You Read Your Mind, is by a different author, and her name is Suzanne Lloyd. And unfortunately, that one is not available at the Mercer County Library System, but you can try to request this book through our interlibrary loan department. And also, Jacob Grant is not the author of this following book, but Sarah O'Leary is, and the name of the book is Owls Are Good for Keeping Secrets, an unusual alphabet. Okay, here is the cover to Scaredy Kate. It is published by Barron's in the year 2014, and it's available in print form and electric format through Hoopla eBook. Kate has a problem. She's terrified of her aunt's big bulldog. See the dog? Kate's aunt calls the dog Cookie. Kate calls the dog a monster. One day after fleeing the apartment to escape Cookie, Kate takes the strangest elevator ride ever, complete with a mysterious package and floor after floor of real life monsters. It takes all of Kate's courage, but Kate soon finds that sometimes monsters aren't so scary after all. Kate makes some new friends and she discovers the perfect way to tame her own beast that dog, Cookie. Little Bird's Bad Word by Jacob Grant. And it was published in 2015 by Fywell and Friends. Little Bird learns a new word. He loves it so much that he's bursting to share it with all his friends. The only problem is that it isn't a very nice word. And Little Bird doesn't realize it. But this word, block, 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 might hurt some people's feelings. And with the help of Papa Bird, Little Bird will learn another word, one that will make things all better. Catnip by Firewall and Friends, published in 2016. Cat and Yawn are best friends. They have so much fun playing together. The two are inseparable. 
until the day the girl takes Yawn away. And when Yawn returns, he's completely changed, no longer Cat Sprite and Raleigh friend. And Cat is mad. Soon, Cat begins to miss his best friend, and he just might realize that a little change isn't so bad after all. Through the Zoo by Firewall and Friends, the publisher, in the year 2017. Through with the Zoo is about Goat, and Goat has only dreamt of having his own space. But Goat lives in a petting zoo, surrounded by hugs and rubs and grabby little hands. Determined to find his perfect alone space, Goat escapes into the big zoo. But space is not so easy thing to find. Owls are good at keeping secrets. Jacob Grant just illustrated this book. The author took each letter of the alphabet and gave a curious fact about that animal. I bet you didn't know that quails get tired of being told to be quiet. And I bet you didn't know that narwhals can be perfectly happy all on their own. Or did you know that chipmunks love to stay up past their bedtime? Bears Scare by Bloomsburg Press in 2018. Bear cares about keeping his house clean and tidy, almost as much as he cares about his stuffed friend Ursa. So he is determined to find the spider building messy webs in his house. Bear out there. When Spider's kite gets stuck in a tree, he looks to his friend Bear for help, even though Bear hesitates to leave his comfort zone. My favorite, especially with Valentine's Day just being a couple of days ago, is Bear meets Bear. Bear and Spider's are seen in Bear's living room, and they're waiting for a delivery of their new teapot. And when Bear sees the delivery person, he is smitten. Bear has never met such a charming lady panda bear. His heart beats fast, and Bear wants to say hello, but his mouth won't move. His moment passes, and a bear decides to order immediately another teapot. And then Lady Panda keeps delivering teapots, and Bear does not speak until Spider tells Bear to speak up and invite her for tea. But another delivery person comes to the door. Spider steps up to the plate by finding Panda and delivering the Panda an invitation to tea. But at the last page, Drinking lemonade while watching a teapot yard sale. Funny book. Here's another one. This book can read your mind. Susan Lloyd is the author, and Jacob Grant is the illustrator. You're going to have to get this book through into the library loan, unfortunately. No pants. Jacob Grant, did you know that on May 6, 2022 is National No Pants Day? But in the book, No Pants, Pablo and his dad are ready for a great day because it's party day. A cookout with the whole family. All they need to do is get ready. Eat. Breakfast brush their teeth, put on pants, and they will be ready to go. Only Pablo has another idea. Just like the title, No Pants.
you can feel free to contact Jacob Grant on his email address, which is jacobgrantbooks at gmail.com, or through Instagram, or Twitter, Facebook, or Tumblr. And friends, we have a very special treat, as Jacob Grant is going to read the last book, No Pants. That's his newest one. And after the reading, Jacob will show us how he draws his favorite character in the book, which is Dog. Hello, uh, I am Jacob Grant, and I am an author and an illustrator who makes picture books. Yes. Now, welcome to my tiny home studio. Uh, I have a book today I want to share with you. It is called No Pants. And you guys probably know this, but being an author and an illustrator means I both write all the words and I draw all of the pictures. And speaking of drawing pictures, make sure you guys have a piece of paper handy and something to draw with. Because after we read this book, we're going to do some drawing, okay? All right. So I'm going to share screen so you guys can see the book nice and big. Uh, so let's see if we can work that out here. All right. So you should be able to see what I'm looking at here. And we're going to make that picture big. Now, looking at the cover of this book, you will see we have a boy who is very excited about apparently not wearing his pants. And we have that dog there. Hmm. So we'll find out what their story is in No Pants by Jacob Grant. That is me. And it starts with Dad. And Dad says, time to wake up, Pablo. Today is a special day. Yes, says Pablo. Party day. That's right, says Dad. The whole family will be at the cookout today. But first, breakfast. Pancakes, please, shouts Pablo. There's not enough time for pancakes. We're having oatmeal. Um, okay, says Pablo. Did you put your bowl in the sink? Asks dad. Yes, says Pablo. And brush your teeth? Yes, says Pablo. Use the potty? Yes, says Pablo. And wash your hands? Yes, says Pablo. Okay, Pablo, just get dressed and we'll be ready to go. No pants. Uh oh. Pablo, we can't go to the party if you don't put on your pants. I don't need pants to party, says Pablo. You have to wear pants, Pablo. It's what we do when we go outside. Everybody wears pants. Everybody? And dad explains, cousin Marco wears pants on the basketball court. Aunt Margaret wears pants in the mountains. The Montoyas wear pants to every recital. And grandpa does not wear pants, says Pablo. No pants. He's <laughs> got style, though, you gotta say. Well, Pablo, our dad says, Maybe not all of the time, Pablo, but most people wear pants some of the time. Yoga teachers wear yoga pants. Firefighters wear turnout pants. Surgeons wear scrub pants. Even Grandpa wears sweatpants. Sometimes. But not all of the time, says Pablo. Dad continues, and pants have been around long before Grandpa was born. Pants have been made in every shape and size 
you can imagine. And people wear pants all around the planet, even in space. Now, please get dressed, Pablo. We don't want to be late for the party. Any pants I can imagine, asks Pablo. Could I wear pants like this? Or are they better like this? Upside down pants are the best pants. Pablo, nobody wears pants like that. <laughs> you can tell dad's getting tired. Oh, but if everybody wears pants, maybe waffles should wear pants too. Maybe all animals should wear pants. <laughs> pants for cats and dogs and bears and whoops. Uh oh, do you guys see what happened to the pants? Enough, Pablo. Just put on something. We need to leave for the party now. But where are your pants? All right, now wait a second. This whole time, this whole time, this whole story, dad has not been wearing pants. The whole time he's telling Papa to put on pants. No pants. Uh, but there they are. Pablo and dad with their matching pants. And all is well. And dad says the party may have started, but there's nothing wrong with being fashionably late. But what kind of party is this? It's a pool party, a pool party. There's not a pair of pants in sight. No pants, shouts Pablo. Leaping into the pool. The end. <laughs> oh, there's waffles. All right, now I'm gonna exit out of my screen share here. I think you guys can see me. Uh, now, one cool thing about this book, which I get to share when I share this book, is there's a special cover underneath the jacket of this book. So if you remove the jacket, we see, looks a little bit like Pablo in his no pants. <laughs> and if you flip it over, we got dad. I, I just have to say how proud I am of that, that barcode placement there. This is worth every email. All right, now, if you guys still have that piece of paper handy, we're going to do some drawing. Uh, so I'm going to get a clean sheet here to draw on, because I want to show you guys how I draw my favorite character in this book, which is Waffles the dog. I think dogs are just fun to draw. Now, the trick to drawing just about anything is starting with very simple shapes, and Waffles is no different. So for Waffles, we're going to start with a large oval, very large oval shape there. And this is going to be the head of our dog. So we have our oval here. We are going to add a little triangle up here on the edge. We're going to add another little triangle not far from there. And then we're going to add another triangle, but this one's going to be pointing down. So this one is going to be over here. I want to color that in. That's what going to be Waffles' nose. Next step here, we're going to add some eyes. And for Waffles' eyes, they're going to be just above that nose. One little circle, and then another little circle close to that. Because Waffles actually has very tiny eyes. And if you want to draw a little dot inside of there, you can show where Waffles is looking. In this case, he's kind of uh, looking at us. A little wonky-eyed. Next, we're going to add a body to Waffles. We're going to add, right from the bottom of this, we're going to draw a line over. And it's going to be a large rectangle. So his body just goes straight over, comes down to the bottom of the head. And that is all we need to describe Waffles' body. We're going to add some legs 
to this shape here. I'm going to pull this over a bit to make sure you guys can see it. Uh, we're going to add one little egg. So just a little tall rectangle there. So Waffles has these short little legs. It's kind of like a corgi, if you know those dogs. We're going to add one around the back here, another little leg, and another one not far from there. So we have four little legs for our dog. Next, we're going to add a tail. Now for Waffle's tail, I'm going to start back here at the end of this rectangle. And I'm going to draw a shape that comes up as a curve and another curve that comes back down. Because his tail actually looks a little bit like a moon. You can see that shape there. All right. So I think we're in pretty good shape. It looks like a dog. We can add some little lines on here to show the paws. Little lines for those toes, little dog toes. And what does Waffles want in this book? As we see on the back cover of this book, Waffles wants a pair of pants. So we're going to add some pants to this dog. I'm going to draw a line right down the middle there. That's going to be the waist of the pants and a line across each leg. Now, you could make this pant look like anything you want because this is your drawing. Uh, in this case, I think I'm going to make it a, a polka dot pant. So I'm just going to draw some little polka dots all across these nice pants, all the way down to the legs <laughs> for our stylish Waffles the dog. All right. Now, I want to say thank you all for hanging out with me today, for, for sharing this book and for doing some drawing with me. Uh, and yeah, you guys have a good one. Bye-bye. On behalf of all our library friends, we say a big thank you to you, Jacob. Be sure to look for his books in our library catalog. Bye, friends. To the next time.